Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Law Live Audio Wrestling, and joining me now, joining me now is a man that I've known for many, many years. I've known him since he pretty much broke into this entire business of professional wrestling. Uh, he is probably one of the greatest stories of professional wrestling, especially of today. Might even be of all time. Who knows? Uh, right now, joining me, Impact Wrestling superstar, overall good guy, uh, and really, really horrible driver, Mr. Crazy Steve. Mr. Steven Scott, Mr. Crazy, Mr. Steve, Mr. Scott, what are we going with today? How are we? How are we doing? I am how you devils dress me after all. So <laughs> it's whatever you like. So I'm going to ask you right out the gate. I mean, you and I have yep. known each other and we've had many, many conversations and this one might be a little bit different, uh, hopefully. Um, why Crazy Steve? Why not Crazy Scott? Why not Crazy Frank? Why Steve? Yeah. Um, well, so... so the name was given to me i didn't pick the name it was it was given to me by sin Bodhi, who we both know um he saw me in class one day at uh, eric young's wrestleplex in cambridge and he said uh and the way that i would wrestle in in training is the way that i would wrestle in front of a uh, sold out house i i always kind of just had these weird mannerisms with my body and I would use my voice to project because I'm tiny. And uh, so using my voice to project and yell and scream as I throw a clothesline or with a headlock takeover or anything like that, it just helps articulate the move, especially with somebody being a small size, right? And I noticed that from someone like uh, uh, Chris Benoit or, or Albert. Actually, those two were wrestling on SmackDown. I remember it. And both of them, as they're charging at each other with clotheslines and back elbows and this, that, they're, they're screaming at the top of their lungs, and it was like a, a car wreck. I, so I just took from that, and I always used it in class. So fast forward, Sin Bodhi comes, and he's seeing me wrestle, and I don't know a lot. I've maybe been in training for maybe three, four months, maybe at that point. And he pulled EY aside, and he said, I like that kid. That kid's crazy. He's, he's You should call him Crazy Steve. So... So I, I was told this after class and I was like, oh, that's awesome that Sin likes me. But I never liked the name Crazy Steve. I, I always just, to me, it, it reminded me of like the frat guy who gets naked at parties and like runs around. No, oh, there goes Crazy Steve again, right? It doesn't, it didn't sound like a wrestling name to me. Right? And it, it, it just, it, it didn't. I, and like I'm, I grew up with like The Undertaker and Raven, Sting and Kane, Mankind, like these one word, like cool names. So that's what I had in my head. Um, but it just didn't fit for a guy who had, you know, who was 130 pounds, had no build and didn't look like anything intimidating. I looked like a crazy person. Um, and so it wasn't till the first match I ever had. Uh, you might have even been on the card. It was for Neo. Uh, I know the main event was EY and JT Player in a lumberjack match. And I tagged with Sin Bodhi against um, Hacker, the original Hacker, and Jet Jace Fury. And I didn't, like, I didn't even know I was wrestling until that day. I was told, and, and I was like, oh, what am I going to be called? And I talked to Sin, and he's like, hey, man, you can be called whatever you want. It's, it's your name. And you can change it whenever you want to. I think Crazy Steve has legs if you want to use it feel free to use that. I think it could be cool. So that's what I was called that night. And I was on the apron and I'm waiting for the tag and I'm jumping up and down and I'm working the apron as you do. And I got all this energy and the people start going, crazy Steve, crazy Steve, crazy. And I was like, oh, okay, there it is. I get it. Yeah, it's sense. always it's always been one of those things that like, if you look at some of the some of the best names out there, you know, the most memorable names for sure are the ones that are done in like that three syllable, you know what I mean? Chant, right? That blah, 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 yeah. blah, 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 blah. It works out so much better than, than some of the other ones. Right. I think it was, I think it was actually Raven that told me that years and years and years ago, like it was like, if you have something that is like, you know, something with that three syllable, like that three spot, right. Name, then you're doing yeah. something right. Right. So I get that. Yeah. Now, yeah. And now, then it was just, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Uh, you go ahead. I was going to say, it was just like, it was that light bulb moment. It was like, this is how I connect with that audience. Mm -hmm. 
Like that's the thing. And so like, even now to today, to what I'm doing currently in impact, it's, I don't necessarily think the name crazy Steve fits all of the things that we're doing, but it's just, I've had it for 21 years now going on 22 years. So like, it just is, it's just kind of one of those things. Like I'll use the, the band corn, for example, if you don't know who that band is and you've never heard them before, and then someone says, Hey, you want to listen to corn? your first thought is like, what? Like, that's the worst name ever. <laughs> and then whether you like the music or not, you would understand, okay, it, like when you hear that, like when you hear someone talk about corn, you don't think of corn, you think of the band and you can right. hear them play again. You know what I mean? They've cultivated a sound that they've owned that name. That name yeah. belongs to them at this point. So that's kind yeah, of like yeah. the examples of music. Yes. There was, there was a, there was well, a band, Billy Talent. I'll use this yes. as a story, right? Uh, Canadian band. I, I, I knew the guys way, way back. I ran their security for them uh, when they were still kids. And I can remember one time I'm sitting here. Um, it was when their first hit first came out, right? On, on uh, much music, Canada's MTV or whatever. And I'm watching and I'm watching the TV and I'm like, Hey, that's, that's the kids from Pez. Cause that's what they used to be called. Right. It was like, I, I know this sound. I know that's these kids from Pez. And all of a sudden they're like, Oh, the new hit from blah, 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 Billy talent. And I'm like, wait a second. So they'll, they'll always still be Pez. You know what I mean? Sure. To, to, sure. to me, but, but yes, you can, you can always change the name, but if it's there right out the gate, why not? Right. So let's talk yeah. about right out the gate for a second. And, and you sure. mentioned this yourself. You're 130 pounds, probably less when you started training, right? Because yeah, we've, yeah. we've, we've seen the pictures. You're built like yeah. a fucking wind chime, right? And, and, <laughs> but, but, you, but you watch wrestling and you see all of these like gigantic dudes, Undertaker and, and, and you know, Warlord and, and the Ultimate Warrior and all of these like massive, massive dudes. What in your mind said to you, I can do that? Ignorance. Okay. <laughs> maybe, you know, like maybe that's what it was. Cause you're, you're right. And I couldn't tell you, like, it's not like I didn't watch your Ray Mysterio's or your Bret Hart's or your Chris Jericho's and stuff like that. But I grew up on your Andre, the giants, your Hulk Hogan's, your ultimate warriors. So as a kid, I don't know any better. It's, it was, but that's what I wanted to do. And then as I grew older, it's not that passion didn't fade. If anything, it just grew stronger. And then, like I said, like the talent grew smaller to to a degree you weren't relying on your your hulk hogan's or your andre the giants at this point now you're relying on your ray mysterios your chris jericho's your eddie guerrero's and then even then like like i said i walk into the wrestling gym at 130 pounds like i'm still so tiny but it's it gave me enough gave me enough hope to be like yeah you know what i can still i can still do this you know so and let's on talk some sort of level too yeah Go ahead. Let, let's talk about the alumni that came out of WrestlePlex. Like the amount of talent that that Eric Young, right? The the trainer who, I mean, he came from same place I came from, that Hart Brothers School of of wrestling. You know what I mean? Um, dudes that came out of there, fantastic. Dudes that I've trained, awesome. But Eric Young has he had this group, and it wasn't like it wasn't like WrestlePlex. WrestlePlex was this long-standing school that lasted for years and years and years, right? This was a place that kind of just came along overnight, got this group of dudes, you know, of which, I mean, we're talking about Sean Spears. You're talking mm -hmm. about yourself, you know, um, you, you, Eric Young, of course, right? Yeah. Some of these guys. And then, you know, you had some of, like the Mad Bomber, who has, yep. you know, written a couple of books about the business. You've got TJ Harley, you know, who doesn't believe in gravity or birds anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course. We're talking and, just I mean, this, you've got you've, this, Jake O'Reilly, Cody yeah. Deaner's gone through there. Like, like all these guys that, it, and, and to your credit, like in such a short window of time of existence, the amount of success that kind of came through there is pretty crazy. It's unbelievable. Right. So, yeah. What what was your what was your first impression with this group of guys when you when you first seen them and, and was like, oh, these 
these guys are going to be my brothers for life, whether I like it or yeah. not. Yeah. First, so okay, I will say the first impression, like honest impression, would be when like I walked into those gym doors for the first day, which I say is gym doors. It wasn't. It was the worst place where you could put a wrestling school is right underneath the recording studio. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where we were. Yeah. And uh, and the ring was a low boy, right? So it's cut all the way to the ground, which for me at 18 years old, that was unbeknown. I'd never seen that before. Right. So and not only that, but I'm like. I'm I've never been that close to a wrestling ring before either. Yeah. That was the other thing. So it was a lot to take in. Um yeah, it was it was a lot to take in and you just you couldn't judge a book by its cover because it was just so much. Who is, you know who what is, I mean? Like who is smaller? Who is smaller in that class? Yourself or my co host Brady Wedham? Brady. He was I was lucky <laughs> that I was a little bit bigger than him. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But it worked out because then I can, like, I was able to do stuff with him that I can't do with other guys because they're too big. Right. And so I was able to do both. I was able to, to not only like do all the high flying stuff, but I was also able to base. So it worked out. It was really, really awesome <laughs> that <laughs> like that it worked out that way. We, we worked quite a bit in those early, early days. And then, and then you, you, you get out of there and you start working, you start working shows. Do you remember your first match? Yes. Yeah. That was the one I had spoke about with crazy Steve. I remember very well in St. Catharines in the curling arena. Um, but prior to that, I'd been to a, a bunch of, in Neo shows to help set up the ring and, mm -hmm. and to be around the boys and, and to, to, you know, gain a trust and, and to gain experience and knowledge. Right. So definitely not my first independent show, but uh, yeah. And, it's, weird. And it's weird when you think about it because most guys, hello, puppers. Most guys, you know, get thrown in like that first match is like, oh, toss them in a battle royal. You know what I mean? Where you don't have to do a hell of a lot. Like it's just like yeah. get some get some comfortableness, you know, with being in the ring, being in front of people, but you can hide inside of a battle royal. So I understand like most most promoters and stuff like that will want to do go that route for yourself. You're thrown right into a match where number one, you've got to perform. Number two, you've got to uh, do actual moves. It's not just kick punch in a corner, dump somebody on the outside. Like you've actually got to remember, remember your stuff, remember your spots. Do you, do you remember if you hit everything the way you were supposed I to? I couldn't remember where I put my gear bag. <laughs> okay <laughs> when they told me that hey you're wrestling today did you bring your gear bag I, of course i brought my gear bag okay well you're wrestling oh shit uh okay now again we're in a curling arena there's two locker rooms a home and away and they're on the same aisle right and i could not yeah and i just paced up and down because i couldn't find it for like the longest time um so and then we then we go through the match and we were semi-main nonetheless. So that's another like, oh shit moment. Um, so in a blessing, or it's a, it's a, it was a blessing in disguise because it gave me more time to kind of figure out and remember and kind of get my, you know, get my nerves together and, you know, all that stuff. And then we get through the match and it was fine. Like it went, it went just fine. It went exactly as, as we had planned and, and as we had wanted it to go. And I can remember, a couple days later, Hacker called me out of the blue. I didn't I didn't have much conversations with Hacker up to this point, but he called me out of the blue and he said, Hey, I just want to let you know, like for your first match, there was a lot put on you. And he said, like that, like in comparison to my first match, it was it pales in comparison because like it, there was so much put on you and you did so well. And I just want to thank you. And you know, he just gave me like a a phone call to boost me up and gave me confidence. And it was awesome. Um, and so those were, those are my takeaways from that. Also, you, I shit myself in that match too. Did you? For the yeah. first time. How many times? Yes. How many times? How many times Only did once. you shit yourself? Only did just that time first time. My first match. Yes. I got it out of the way right away. <laughs> so I don't, I don't trust anybody who hasn't done it yet. I don't that trust was the, you. You haven't been working long enough. What, yeah, right. It was the, was yep. the lesson, was the lesson in this one uh, to not eat before you wrestle 
<laughs> no, you know what it was. It was, and it still is like this to to this day. It's it was just nerves. Right. My nerves were so shot that your body itself, your, your like your system just speeds up. Yep. So I was, as we all know, as wrestlers or anybody performers, like you, you crap like twenty times a day, and you try yep. not to eat as, a, a bunch, but at the same time, you don't want to be dehydrated, and you don't want to be going out there on an empty stomach with no energy, especially yep. based on what we have to do. So, you know, it's, yeah, you just can't win there. You can't win. There's no, <laughs> there's no winning. I'm just happy. I got it out of the way when I did. It hasn't happened since thank God. Uh, but you know, it really it did, is. It, it really is something that you, you learn early enough in your career. I, it happened to me. It happened to me. I think, I think it was like, I took a, the first time it happened, I took like some fucking body slam from Magnus, uh, Magnus von Steel, my old tag partner, who was you know you remember this this like yeah. you know Johnny Bravo looking six foot twenty six inch arm like yeah. meathead his, of a dude right. His and name is he, Magnus von Steel. Okay, <laughs> it's not because he was like five foot four and one hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah, right, right. right? We, did, we didn't yeah. call him didn't call him Big Lou because he was three feet tall. You know, <laughs> this is not a name of irony, folks. Oh. And he gave me a body slam and literally it was like, oh, oh, uh oh, oh boy, there it is. <laughs> now, yep. this is also the reason that I believe that uh, we're told at a very early age in our careers to make sure that you wear compression shorts. <laughs> right, 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 right. Because last thing you want is to be wearing boxers or free hanging whitey, you know, tidy whiteys or anything yep. like that, where something could slip out the bottom and, you know, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Outside of out, okay, so outside of shitting yourself in a ring, uh yes. have have you have you had one of those moments yet where like you've you've been like, oh this this is this is not gonna go good. Cause we've all seen like we've we've talked about people shitting in the ring, you know, or, or in their in their mm -hmm. match. Have you puked yet during a match? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Never. Nope, not not no. The only thing, like the only things I can think of, and like we've all kind of gone through that as well as wrestlers, is like where either you haven't had time to warm up, yeah, because something's got pushed, and hey, we need you to go on now, and you're like, are you what now? Oh, geez, and you haven't stretched, and you're going out there kind of cold, um, and you maybe you don't have it all the way together, like those those moments that's usually when you're like oh okay i hope i you know i just hope no one gets hurt let's get through this and stuff like that you know and those, you know that's part of wrestling that's you just kind of that happens sometimes yeah yeah i mean i i think that listen uh, if i were to tell you that even after you know 26 years of, of wrestling if i were to say that there's that always that thing right before your music hits and you're sitting there going uh i gotta piss Oh, that's every time. Yeah, every, that's every time. Every single it's time. Every, yes. And that like every time. And I know where I'm at on the card most nights. So it's like, I time it out and it does not matter. I know when to be in gorilla position to be ready to go. And it's like, oh, I have to keep. But as soon as you go through the curtain, it goes away. Yeah. As soon as, as soon as you go through the curtain, it goes away. Um, I will tell you one time where there, when would this have been? Maybe 2015? We were uh, it was for Impact, and I had to do an Ultimate X match. For those of you who don't know what an Ultimate X match, they have towers kind of surrounding the ring posts, and then there's a cable, which makes an X over top of these towers. They hang the belt in the middle, and the wrestlers are to jump up and grab the cable and then kind of walk their way with their arms and legs towards the belt to pull it down to the middle of the ring. Google it, Ultimate X. Anyway, I digress. We had this pay-per-view where each person who was uh, being entered into this main event Ultimate X match had to compete in a triple threat beforehand. So I was one of the people who was going on to the main event. And it was one of these things where like, you could never put the match together because one guy was either already in the ring who's, who's doing his match. And then there's two or three other dudes who were going through their triple threats to go right after. And then I think right before the Ultimate X, there was like, uh, 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 I think the girls had a match and they may have had like eight minutes, eight, maybe, maybe a little bit longer, maybe eight to 10. And that was the only time that all of us could get together to put together um, a match as dangerous as ultimate X is. And I can remember going through the curtain that 
at that moment with nerves, but not the same type of nerves that we have where like, I have to pee before I have to wrestle or oh, I didn't stretch. It's like nerves of like, Oh, I hope this, I hope no one gets hurt. Cause it was, it's just so it was scary and no one did get hurt. It did go off very well, but I'm being in that position. I can remember like a different kind of scared. If that makes sense, different kind of nerves. 100% because you have that scared. Uh, uh, you have that scared where you're thinking about the match and you're like, oh shit, I know what's expected inside of this match. And that can be, okay, uh, we've got to, we've got to pull out all the stops. We've got to go out there and we've got to do something ridiculous and silly. So there's those types of nerves, but then there's mm-hmm. also the types of nerves where you, you, you get to the show and you're like, okay, they got me in this kind of match. Cool. No problem. And you look out there and you find out that the, the, the ring has like three broken boards They've they've right. put up a, they put up a cage that's being held together with zip ties. They, yeah. they you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, so, then there's the equipment, yeah. the equipment end of things that makes you have so, those kind of nerves, right? <laughs> that brings me to that is like I we haven't brought it up, but I'm I'm blind. What? And so for, yeah, I know. Surprise, surprise. Um, and so to look up to grab these cables, I right. can't see them. It's right. just lights. So I have that on top of all everything that you've just said. In my case specifically, it's like, you know, like I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to physically do this because I can't see the damn cables, man. <laughs> has there and ever so been? A, just, has there ever been a moment? Has there ever been a moment where that's like actually been? Because obviously you've been able to get through every single one of these moments, but there has there ever been something where it's been like. Uh, outside of like ultimate X, you know what I mean? With cables yeah. hanging right directly underneath lights or whatever like that. Like, has there been one of these moments? Like, have you ever had to show up to a show and been like, you dummies taped your ring ropes white. Um, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Um, like, <laughs> just, there's, It's different for every scenario. So like I worked for House of Hardcore, Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore, and everything is black. And he, he wrestles inside the 2300 arena, ECW arena, and it's all painted black. And he get he thinks it's hilarious. Um, so, he, <laughs> and then there's been times where like, you know what really messes me up? It's certain lighting rigs where they only have spotlights over the four corners of the ring posts. That really messes me up because when I'm, as you know, when you're in the ring and you're corner to corner with somebody, I can't see them at all. It's just that blinding light. So they're backlit. So it's, really really difficult for me and I can remember being in a ring in that scenario where I was wrestling John Morrison and he had me on the mat and he was on the top rope and he was going for one of his many flippity doos and I was to move out of the way well when he got up to the top rope I lost him I could not see him he was backlit and I couldn't see when he was going to jump or when he was getting ready to jump or anything like that so Part of me is like, I don't want to roll in too soon because then he looks like a dink. I don't want to roll in too late because then one of us gets hurt or maybe we both get hurt. It was it was a scary moment. Um, and what got me through it was, oddly enough, his, his bedazzled gear, his jeans, they had these little sparkles coming off. Like the light was reflecting off the diamonds and all the little sparkles on his gear. And I can just vaguely remember seeing these little twinkles and as soon as they disappeared i knew he was in the air i was able to roll through and we were fine but that split second of panic going across my face of of, you know going through my head was was real it was very real is is that the biggest fear of yours like being in there and not being able to get out of the way of something or is there something bigger you know what i mean inside of wrestling what is your fear uh i just i don't I don't, uh, I think at this stage, it's not getting hurt and not hurting someone. So I don't want to be put in a position where I can't see or my eyesight comes into play. And then to the point where, again, where either I'm getting hurt or someone's getting hurt. That's probably my biggest fear at this point. If I screw up a spot and people see it, I don't care. It'll live and die in that moment or for the next five minutes on Twitter. Like it really doesn't matter. You know what I mean? At this point. And I think, uh, you know, with the work that I've put in and the work that I continue to put in, I think people have a pretty good understanding of what my body of work looks like. And something like that isn't really going to affect it to 
some sort of, you know, do you think that people, do you think people give you extra leeway because, because they, they know that you're blind? So, um, may, I don't know. I don't think my coworkers do. And that's what is right. most important to me. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been in a situation where to my knowledge, someone has like complained that they've had to work me because of eyesight. We've definitely had to change things where people have come up with ideas and I'm like, dude, I won't see that. And right. it, it, they're like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, man, seriously. And it's like either I'll make it look bad or we'll get hurt. And I just want to avoid both of those scenarios. So let's just change it. And that's part of pro wrestling. Like, I, In anything that I do, I'm never married to, I have to do this. Right. Or I've got to get this spot. I've never been married to that. It's That's not how I perform. That's not how I choose to put together a match. Like, I'm very much, let's, what about this? Or what mm -hmm. if we do this? And then we, you know. And, and like that, but I've never been the person who's like, I have to do this unless it's asked of me specifically by my boss, right. you know, otherwise let's have fun. We can do whatever. Cause I think and sometimes I can, that's how, you know, I can remember, I can remember for myself, like I'm very much the same way. There's not a lot of times you, and you know, this as well as I do, you get there, you're like, okay, this is who I'm working and then when you get there, you start to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? Where are we at on the card? What are we going to do that's appropriate for it? You know what I mean? And figure out your match with who you're working with. Typically yes. the day of, you know what I mean? You're getting ready to go out there. I can remember you and I, we were, we were both working for Neo and we were, we were stuck in a program together for holy shit it had to be over a year. Mm -hmm. right where you and i are mm -hmm. doing all these matches and and you came to me you came to me after one of them you're like what are we going to do on this next one i said i got an idea now, this is going to be fun and we literally i don't know if you remember this or not we literally i came to you and i said we're going to do an exact match we're going to do a you know we're going to take this match and we're going to do exactly what they did and see if anybody picks up on it whatsoever <laughs> and you and i notice. went out there right see if they noticed and we went out there and we did the exact match that that rhino and uh spike dudley did oh that's yes i do remember this now cuz i'm that finish i know yeah yeah i know exactly right yes yeah <laughs> and 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 we did this exact thing and it's it's been the only time that I've ever like, we've all taken things. Oh, you know, you see it's a certain match and you, you, you pull out a spot for a certain, you know what I mean? And you yep. add it to yours, but that has literally been the only time. And it was with you that I've reenacted an entire match, which is, which was fun. It was funny, but it would also taught me that I don't want to have to remember an entire fucking match. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? To yeah. 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 This thing. Right. Yeah, it is a fun experiment because you do get to see like, oh, they, they pop on this because of like, it just, it's definitely a fun experiment to do. But yeah, not something that I'm interested in doing all of the time. That's right? for sure. So, yeah. ridic so ridiculous. Some of the things that we do when we're younger in that, in, in our careers, have you ever, what has been, what has been for you though? Cause I know what it has been for me. What has it been for you? Where it's been that, that moment where you've gone to a show promoter has said to you hey i've got this idea <laughs> that i want you to do and you've literally had to say to them you you want me to what like for example i'm going to use you again as an example because you and i you and i have worked together an awful lot when you were when you were breaking in and before you decided to you know move on to much better things there was a spot where I get to a show and the promoter says, Hey, we've got an ambulance here and we're going to do this spot yeah. where crazy Steve is going to be sitting out outside talking to the fans before his show, you know, cause, yeah. cause that's a normal thing to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We want you to go give crazy Steve a pile driver in the parking lot. And mm -hmm. Why is it, why is it that promoters have these ideas and they've never actually done any of these things themselves? All right. That specific example, I hear, I got to say, I, for the record, that specific example can't be blamed on the promoter. And the reason is, is it was my idea. You motherfucker. Because I was helping, <laughs> I was helping book those shows with Jay Moore at the time. 
And we'd go over to his place. We'd have some rum and cokes. We'd book the show, and we'd just think of like crazy ideas. And like, and I said, "Do you think you can get a hold of like the the local, you know, ambulance around here and see if they would have some volunteers do that? Because sometimes that happens." And that's exactly what happened. Like we didn't have to pay for that or anything. They they were all volunteers. It was an exercise for them to come and like actually do what they would do in that scenario. And then take me off and all that. And like, it worked out so well and it was definitely out of control and crazy, but like it worked. Cause and I did not come back. If you remember, cause you were in the main with, Oh, uh, I think O'Reilly and danger boy and a few other, or someone else. There was my yeah. four way. And I was told that, you know, that they were chanting my name, the, like that entire main event because they wanted me to come back. And I did not until like a few shows later where yeah. I, where I chased you out of the ring with a flaming barbed wire baseball bat. Again, <laughs> I'm legally blind. I should not be running through an audience with a flaming baseball bat. Oh, I, don't, I, don't, I know. Uh, to, to answer your question, there has been an instance, and it was, it was actually an impact where they wanted, it was the, the match where we won the tag titles, and they wanted to call it the some sort of like, it was basically a monster's ball match, but they wanted to make, have a decay spin on it and so their uh, grand idea was and again a monster's ball we're dealing with barbed wire and thumbtacks and tables and a lot of a lot of uh weapons and a lot of you know instances where you can get hurt and so they wanted to do this thing where they flicker the lights on and off throughout the entire match and have some sort of like shadowy effect and i had to say to billy corgan and those guys like guys no <laughs> We're not doing that. We can't. I will kill someone or I will. There's barbed wire in the rig, man. And you're going to mess with the lights. Please. Can we do something else? And they were like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. OK, yeah, let's not kill Steve. All right. Hey, hey, let's change this. And so there's there's been a couple instances like that where where I've had to like, hey, let's what about. What about not this? <laughs> <laughs> you had to re remind people. Because, I mean, in, in their defense, you know what I mean? It's not every day you're working at a company you're it, where where you're – it's a visual medium company. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're out there acting, you're out there performing, and then you have to remember, oh, wait, one of the fucking guys that we're working with here is blind. Right. It's not – I mean, <laughs> is there any other blind – do you know of any other blind wrestlers out there? Um, there's, um, there's a referee currently who has ref for impact recently, actually. Um, and he is blind too. He's got, he, he might even have worse eyesight than I do in all honesty. Um, and then I'm definitely not the first legally blind wrestler by any stretch of the imagination. Stan Hansen, uh, there's a few, uh, Stan Hansen is always the first one that comes to my sure. mind, but I know there's, there's been others. Um, I think I could be the like this generation's legally blind professional wrestler. I don't know of anybody else who's at least doing it on the level that I'm doing it who's also legally blind. That being said, I have gotten a lot of like um, messages through social media of, of people with eyesight issues who are like, hey, I'm going to try wrestling. I'm going to give it a try based on your story. And or, you know, it doesn't have to just be that. If, there's been a lot of, you know, people who have seen my story either through various mediums. Um, and have messaged me and said, Hey, like you're, you're a real inspiration for this. And I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to try my hand at pro wrestling and stuff like that too. So uh, that's really cool. It's really, really neat to read and very humbling all in the same go. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely not the first. And from the looks of things, I won't be the last. Let's so let's talk about silly stuff because you were part of a thing that impact did called wrestle house yeah yeah and they put you in a match they put you in a blindfold <laughs> match was was there really any purpose to putting a blindfold on you uh besides you know the humor that was shared throughout the the crew the cast and crew i don't know uh, i do remember getting that and reading that and like what are we doing what <laughs> uh Man, were you I ever, forgot that that happened. Oh. Were you yeah, were you ahead. part were you part of that um that thing that they did in Toronto, that art show thing? I know that I was there, Danger Boy was there, Jake O'Reilly was there, 
when we did a a a battle royal, a three hour long battle royal inside of a cage blindfolded. I was not a part of that. I know of it, and I'm so sad that I wasn't because I know it was a good payday too for an independent guy at the time. But it just sounded so strange. I totally wanted to to take part in it. I could. I don't know. I either I couldn't get booked or there was something else on the go. Both both of those examples could very well be true. But I know I wasn't a part of it, and I can remember being excited to talk to Jake O'Reilly and say, "Dude, what you got to tell me? How ridiculous was this?" It was but the yeah, most ridiculous I, I, thing in the world, dude. At one uh, point, at one point, the 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 guy who was putting on the whole thing also wanted to be a wrestler. But I don't think he ever trained. He was just using this as like, hey, like most most people do. You know what I mean? To either become promoters or get themselves into a ring somehow. That's what he did. And at one point, because he was just taking blind shots at people. And I remember at one point, myself and Jake O'Reilly literally like pulling up our blindfolds so we could find where this guy was and just taking straight runs at him with our <laughs> fists straight out in the air. Like just who the hell do you think this you are? Right. What it, it was so ridiculous. It was such a ridiculous match. Have you, what's been the most ridiculous match that you've had to be a part of? Cool. You brought up a good one with the blindfold one. I forgot about that until now, honestly. Uh, most ridiculous that that one's got to be up there just for the, the sheer hilarity of it right on the, absurd, the absurdity of the fact that there were yeah. a blindfold on a blind guy yeah yeah um and and it's with johnny swinger too like you gotta <laughs> shout out johnny swinger because he's such a beauty um so oh man you really put me on the spot there's been some wacky battle royals for sure um especially around the halloween time era like you know i just did a battle royal where i eliminated like super mario and luigi and and wilma from the flintstones so like things like that um i I know toronto at some point had wrestling at anime conventions and those are always crazy and fun and ridiculous a lot of battle royals i'll say um you know what i guess you also got to throw up the Hardys, all the stuff that we did there with the Hardys, you know, with Tag Team Apocalypto. I was shot out of a volcano. Right. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? I had a drone shoot fireworks at my face. Uh, you know, like I, the Hardy stuff has got to be number one. It's got to be as far as ridiculous and outrageous and, and crazy and all that stuff. It's got to be uh, both instances, the Tag Team Apocalypto, what we did with the Hardys and the Great War and, uh, Delete versus Decay, of course, all, all that stuff. All that stuff was, again, just absolutely ridiculous. And it was so much fun. And at a time where wrestling fans wanted that too, they were in on they were in on the joke. They wanted it to be ridiculous. And it was such a fun creative process to just to to do. And like both Matt and Jeff were completely out of their minds as well. So the idea that, oh, Jeff just built a volcano in his backyard. So we got that to play with. Like, what? Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. So. It's just a gigantic science experiment for his kids that he was like, wait a second, all these volcanoes that they built for school science experiments, let's do a gigantic one in the backyard yeah. and use it for this yeah. wrestling skit. Yeah. Absolutely. He would just do that because that's just Jeff. Right. Like it doesn't, he doesn't have to have the excuse of kids. He's got it, but he doesn't need it, man. Like, You know, so, and he's so artsy. He's got to do stuff outside of wrestling like that. So he built this volcano. It was probably, originally it was probably for jumping his dirt bikes in his backyard, right? So he's like, well, we'll just make it into a volcano. Why not? And sure enough, they did. And I was shot out of it. (laughs) I mean, yeah. How many guys are going to be able to go out in their life, in their career and be like, hey, you ever been shot out of a volcano? That's right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, it's probably something that wasn't even on your bucket list. You know what I mean? No, how could it? Not even close. (laughs) Not even close. (laughs) So what's on your bucket list then? What's on your bucket list left that you really think that, like, you really want to accomplish? Oh, wow. That's a really good question. That's a really good question. Um. I want to continue to perform 
at a high level, but I realized like age will slowly win that battle. Right. Um, so with that being said, it's on my bucket list to try to perform in front of the biggest stages in front of the most people. Um, Cause I'm, I've done pay-per-views and I've done that stuff and it's awesome. I love to do it, but I've accomplished those dragons. So now I'm trying to chase other dragons. And so the work that I'm doing right now has been super uh like it's been awesome it's been super fulfilling from an artistic standpoint from a physical standpoint too um so it's tough to say it's really tough to say i i think like the biggest thing for me right now is i'm on like this upward trajectory and i want to continue to ride that and see as see how far i can take that um I would love to wrestle in Japan one day. I think that would be fantastic. I would love to do that at least once. Um, have, you talked to any, have you talked to anybody there? I have not. I don't have, I have, I have contacts, but I haven't reached out in like, in, in, a, in a while to do right. so. Um, but I would do, I would love to, to, to see how I could do in Japan and see what that, you know, with the character and with everything like that, how well that would go. Um, and as far as like I don't know, championships and titles and stuff like that, if that comes my way, then that's fine. But it's some that's somewhat out of my control at the same time. As a as a performer, it's not like I can walk in and book myself into world title matches. That's not how that works. Right. right? You know, there's only so much that you can do as a performer with what we're given and what we're asked to do. Um, and so I'm a professional. I'm going to do the best at, you know, whatever it is that you asked me to do. And I'm pretty artsy and I'm pretty creative. So I'll throw my two cents in there as well. But the idea of like, Hey man, I think I should just be the world champion and beat everybody. <laughs> it's not really how that works. It's not really well, how it is. Works. It is. You just have to start your own promotion. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> not interested in losing all that money. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? This isn't that yeah. how it goes. I'm going to start my own yeah. promotion. I'm going to put the belt on me and I'm just going to waste all of my 401k <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Um, I think like one of my biggest uh, goals that I would like to accomplish is to continue to tell stories in wrestling, you know, I, and that's, more important to me than having you know match of the night or you know doing all that stuff it's not i I, I, that's my style of wrestling and i you don't always get that opportunity for the last three or four years with impact all i was asked to do is like six to eight minute matches that were pretty much they were cold there was no story put into them or anything like that and that was my job and i went out and i did it well um, where now I'm, I'm getting the opportunity to tell more stories and that is what I want to really, really uh, sink my teeth into and see how far that can go. Because to me, that was, that's what I remember the most out of professional wrestling. You know what I mean? Like I, you know, Macho Man and Hulk Hogan wrestled each other at WrestleMania 5 and I remember that. It's awesome, but it, it's everything that led up to that that made it special. Hulk Hogan slamming Andre the Giant was special because it, it was one, it's impressive, but two, it's the emotional effect it had on me, the viewer, watching my hero topple this, you know, this giant of a man. Um, so I can, you know, I can see all of the shooting star presses and 450 splashes all day, and it's impressive. Don't get me wrong, it's very impressive, and it deserves its respect. But for me personally, I think my strengths lie in storytelling. And so I want to have the opportunity to play to those strengths as best as I possibly can while I'm still able to physically do this. Is that a good way of putting it? It's fantastic. So when this, when the story is being written, when the book is being written and obviously, you know, the, the, the crazy Steve saga, the story of crazy Steve, when it is written, um, what do you hope is said about you? Um, this is this comes like specifically from examples of Eric Young and uh, and Abyss Chris Park. Anybody who talks about those human beings has nothing but good things to say about them. Like from a coworker standpoint to the fans, uh, 
you know, and don't get me wrong, you're always going to have your haters and stuff like that. I, I understand that. But that's not what I'm talking about. Like, I'm talking about, you know, any any person who has come in contact with those two human beings in my lifetime has always had good things to say about them. Um, especially when I'm at autograph signings, you know, because of decay and stuff like that. A lot of people come up to me and they say, hey, do you still talk to Abyss? And like, man, I met him at this show and he's so awesome. And like, it's like he's right there. He's it's because of these people keeping him alive. And it's, it's not like he's gone anywhere either. That's not what I'm trying to say. But like, again, it's like he was sitting right beside me because they have so much positivity and passion in their voice when they talk about these two people that I would like that same thing. You know, like you can, however you judge my in-ring abilities, that's up to you. I don't care because I'm doing it and I'm having fun doing it. But outside of the ring or, or you know, in any capacity that we work together, I would like whoever's kind of, whoever's come in contact with me to have those types of things to say to me and speak of me in um, a positive, you know, a positive way. I don't, I don't have this, the drive to have them say he's he was the best wrestler in the world because that's never been my goal um but you know uh, i just want them to speak in in that kind of a light like whether it's from a storyline perspective or or a personal perspective or something like that i would like to be remembered in that kind of a light well i can tell you first and foremost that if anybody comes to me and asks me any questions uh it'll be nothing Nothing but horrible things that I will say about you. Perfect. Uh, that is- <laughs> <laughs> and 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 yeah, and, tr- and they will all be lies. Every yeah. one of them will be an exaggeration. It'll be a lie like they've never heard before. Like, what do you mean he's responsible for starting World War II? Oh yeah, you have no idea what kind of a horrible human being <laughs> Crazy Steve really Blind? was. Blind? I heard he, he's been driving this whole time. He's been working everybody. Yeah, those aren't even real glasses. Lives. That's right, that's right. It's been a lie this whole time. Uh, that's amazing <laughs> Steve uh, listen thank you so much for joining us here on the law live audio wrestling uh, you know I, I I'm, I'm sure that you listened to all of this when when you were younger and it's nice to I have did. it back and it's it's oh so nice to have you on here telling a little bit of your story and like I said it's not a we don't do these typical you know like, what do you think about your match coming up with so-and-so? No, we try to get a lot more personable, a lot more uh, locker room talk, so to speak. It's just it's just me talking to you, and we're just having a good time. I hope that you had a great time uh, talking with me. Actually, I don't really give a shit. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, you will always go down as one of my favorite human beings, uh, not just in wrestling, but in life. Um, and I appreciate everything that you do for the business. I just want to say that first and foremost, um, you have become, you've become a story inside of this business, um, that I think a lot more people should know about, um, because your, your determination, uh, to do something that should have been so far out of your reach, so far out of your realm right of 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 being able to not just physically but mentally be able to do you know um mm-hmm. it's it's a testament to what kind of a human being you are and i can rest you can rest assured knowing that when people do talk about you um even though it's behind your back they are saying nothing but good things steve trust well, me well thank this. you so much you know what i, I, mean? I do appreciate um, that uh dude yeah you gotta stop you gotta stop that's too much uh I know. no honestly i i appreciate it i appreciate the glowing introduction you gave me as well um talking to you is it's easy you know what i mean if, if you were looking for this type of like a type of conversation that we were to have a locker room type this is the one to have because it's we go back so far and it's it's easy and i and i am uh you know i'm i am an open book and it's uh i happy to do this i'd be happy to come back uh Anytime I get to chit chat with you and kind of catch up with you is always a fantastic time. So thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and I hope this was enjoyable for the listeners too, as well. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure it is. And uh, you know, on that note, uh, we will be right back to wrap this entire thing up. Uh, stay with us. You're listening to the law live audio wrestling right here.